Welcome to Plant Medicine Transmissions with Javier Regueiro. In this first episode of Plant Medicine Transmissions, it seems important for me to introduce myself. My name is Javier Regueiro and I'm a plant medicine maestro who's been living and working in Peru since 2005. I was born in Lugano, Switzerland in 1965 from Spanish parents, which means that uh, English is not my mother tongue, so please forgive the occasional grammatical and pronunciation mistake. I first came to Peru in 2004 joining a group of people to go to the jungle outside Pucallpa for an ayahuasca retreat. The experience proved to be so healing, the shift is so profound, that uh, soon after the retreat, I found myself wondering, like so many other people, wondering how I could give back to this medicine that has proven to be so helpful. So, a few weeks later, I first actually entertained the idea of studying plant medicine here in Peru. I continued my travels, and the following year, in 2005, I came to Peru once again, this time to the region of Iquitos, to find out whether my intention of studying plant medicine was just a passing fancy or something more serious and worth pursuing for real. So I landed in Iquitos. The first month I was the guest of a family of three generations of Shipibo people. By that time I'd only had ayahuasca a maximum of nine times. So I spent my time, most importantly, surviving, so to speak, the ceremonies and immediately forgot the main reason for my visit. But surprisingly, during a ceremony, I found myself in such awe of this medicine that I started silently speaking to her and literally said, I think you're awesome and I want to work for you. I heard myself say those things and then spent some time during that same ceremony thinking about what I just expressed and whether I really, really intended to offer my service to this medicine for however long and in however many ways. The answer was a positive one, and the following month I was a guest of Sachamama Ethnobotanical Gardens outside Iquitos, where I met my teacher, Don Francisco Montes Xunha, a plant medicine person, an ayahuasquero and perfumero of Capanawa descent. The Capanawas are a small ethnic group in the Peruvian Amazon, mostly concentrated around the, the village of Tamanco, halfway between Iquitos and Pucallpa. I believe myself to have been truly fortunate because before ever drinking ayahuasca, I had already been on a very long spiritual and healing journey. I was born and raised Catholic, and uh, in my early adolescence, I started reading all sorts of books, particularly around uh, Eastern spirituality, most importantly Buddhism and Taoism. In high school, I started learning and practicing Tai Chi. After high school, I went on a year-long trip 
around Southeast Asia and Japan, engaging very strongly with Balinese spirituality, and eventually moving to Japan, to Kyoto, for a year and a half to study Japanese language and culture. In 91, I moved to New York to study massage therapy at the Swedish Institute of Massage Therapy in Manhattan, which I graduated from. And the next year, also got a certification as a rebirther from the Body Electric School of Massage in Oakland, California. Those were my entry points into the world of healing, a world that until then had been a mystery and a total unknown. Between 93 and 95, I was very engaged, very involved with Avatar, which is a self-development workshop out of Florida, and at the same time had a pretty intense yoga practice in Manhattan. I moved to San Francisco in 96. There I started pursuing a career as a DJ, playing house music in clubs, and at the same time started attending the Burning Man gathering in the Nevada desert, which was a source of many, many important life lessons for me. I mention all this not as a badge of honor, but simply to give you an idea of the scope, the length, and variety of my journey, which really began with a spiritual crisis around the age of 11, when I first discovered that I was gay. I quickly intuited that my sexual orientation was not welcome in the Catholic Church at the time, and so decided to leave the church, meaning leaving what had been my spiritual home since birth. That loss put the finger into a very old and very deep wound of rejection and a fear of inadequacy. So I started looking for that connection with the divine once again all over the world among many different religions and cultures. But it wasn't until the year 2012, during a personal San Pedro ceremony, that I was finally able to heal that separation from the divine. It was a really, really long journey. And I can see now, in retrospect, how important necessary and valuable were each step of my way and also how valuable each discipline, each healing modality, spiritual path that I had engaged with up until then. As important and necessary as each step of the way have been, I found that the shift that I've experienced by engaging with plant medicines, most importantly, ayahuasca and San Pedro, to have been truly radical and to have supported me in finally getting to the nitty-gritty, to the core of my deepest wounds and making the way for true liberation of my soul. As these podcasts are directed to people of 18 years of age and older. And because I speak from Peru, a country that honors the traditional use of plant medicines such as ayahuasca and San Pedro, I can openly say that I love plant medicine. I love ayahuasca, I love San Pedro, I love every single plant and flower that I have dieted over the years and feel utmost gratitude for these energies on this planet that so willingly and generously support us in our own healing and awakening process. 
I am not only a lover of plant medicines. I am also an advocate for the discerning, mindful, and respectful use of these medicines. In 2007, I created the Ayaruna Center here in Pisac, Peru, to conduct my healing work with, most importantly, Ayahuasca and San Pedro, and quickly realized that many people were suffering from misperceptions, misunderstandings about what this process, at least to me, seems to be. These misunderstandings, misperceptions, were actually an important part of why my clients were failing to receive the full benefit of this process and these medicines, which led me to write a book on ayahuasca and later on last year publish a second book on San Pedro Huachuma. These books have been published by Lifestyle Entrepreneur Press, who have also been very supportive in my creation of these podcasts and to whom goes my deepest and heartfelt gratitude. Since I'm mentioning gratitude, I would also like to thank Richard Scheurenbrand to allow me to use uh, a snippet of his beautiful song Rosa from his album Diosana. And uh, to express my gratitude to all my friends who have been supporting me throughout the years and even most recently in the launching of these podcasts. It was very clear to me from the very moment that I offered my vows of service to these medicines back in 2005 that my role was going to be that of a bridge, a bridge between the native cultures of Peru from where the traditional use of ayahuasca and San Pedro come from and the mindset, the psyche, the cultures, foreign cultures of the people not native of this part of the world, but wanting to engage with these traditional plant medicines, to support them in understanding what this process is about so that they could benefit the most from it. This series of podcasts is another way for me to share the knowledge, the wisdom, the information that I have gathered throughout my life and in particular in this last 13, 14 years of intense engagement with plant medicines and traditional cultures here in Peru. My teacher Don Francisco is fond of telling everybody he comes across that plant medicine is a science that never ends. At the beginning I understood that to be along the lines, oh yes, of course, there's always another tree, there's always another plant to study with, to take on as a teacher. But in later years, I've taken that to mean something bigger. I've taken that to mean that life is best experienced always with an attitude of a student to always keep a door open for new information and to always be willing to question the validity of my assumptions. That attitude of a student with an open mind and an open heart has proven to be most, most beneficial to me. My teacher has been calling me maestro for many years now but I also like to add to my uh, shingle plant medicine student and not only maestro. This series of podcasts is also a learning 
opportunity for me. An opportunity for me to put into words, experiences, ideas, concepts that may have been only in the back of my mind so I can share them with you. And I want to thank you, dear listener, for being part of this process. And I hope that listening to these podcasts proves to be a positively enriching experience for you as well. Blessings.